But it would be wrong to paint all of Norway with the same brush as Quisling, because the Norwegian resistance movement was one of the most ferocious and well-organized of World War II. At 40,000 strong, they called wow. themselves the Milorg. Cool. And What's the, that? It's just that I don't know what it means in Norwegian, but it sounds cool as shit. It does. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like, like a so death metal band. Yeah, it sounds like something that lives in the mines of Moria. Milorg. And their ferocity was largely fueled by Nazi brutality. Mm. For example, Norwegians could be executed for having something so innocuous as a bag of British baking flour. As was mentioned in the Bastard Brigade, one village was burned to the ground after a single bag of British flour was found. And as far as the people in that village went, 18 men were executed on the spot and the rest were sent to concentration camps. Oh my God. Honest question. How the fuck do they know the ethnicity of the flour? Truly, it's the bag that it comes in. The bag. It probably has you gotta, some, a Union Jack on it or something, a name of a British company. And this is like, because they were trying to very fully stamp out all, because of how strong the movement was to fight the Nazis from within Norway, they were, they try to punish them as often as possible by doing that, where it's like, we kill everybody for one infraction. Wow. Yeah. In other words, Norway had a few grudges to settle, and a handful of Norwegians got the chance with Operation Gunnerside. Cool. Now, instead of a commando force of 30 British soldiers making a direct assault on the plant, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare <laughs> decided to use Norwegians, and in the process, they played to Norwegian strengths. Oh, yeah, they got big bottom women. They love cl they don't like clocks. Norway likes, oh, God, fjords. <laughs> they use the fjords. <laughs> and then you got- Black metal. Black metal. Yeah, oh yeah. And ships. I also think they like ships and, uh, and vessels of the sea, don't pickled they? Very fish. much so. Yeah. A lot of pickled fish there. <laughs> yeah, pickled fish. It, does the plant involve pickled fish? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, the new plant. Is, no. well, who gives <laughs> Absolutely not. shit? Who cares? No. Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps they had pickled fish along the along for the along for the ride as rations. They also so maybe pickled. I cannot confirm nor deny the existence of pickled fish in Operation Gunnerside. You know okay. who is one of my least favorite things about Norway is what else they gave us was Garrison Keeler. God, what's I wrong hate with Garrison Keeler? I fucking hate Garrison Keeler. Prairie Home Companion. I hate it's a comforting it. Saturday afternoon. I hated Prairie Home Companion. Well, I hate Garrison that show. Had a, I hate their yeah. little voices. I hate quiet radio. <laughs> I hate the, oh, well, let's see what Terry has to say. You know, like, <laughs> I hate, yeah. hate that type of comedy where he just goes like, these rutabagas, are, they're green. And everyone goes, <laughs> Rodney, I hate, hate well, Garrison. Sure. Garrison just lives a small recluse life now, I believe, in Minnesota. Yeah. Well, no the new small plan. back is safe around Garrison Keeler. There you go. Well, the new plan was to use 10 resistance fighters who also happened to be expert skiers who could quickly ski their way to the plant after being parachuted to the ground. Whoa, James Bond. Yeah. I wonder then if that scene Inception was based on this. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, this is just, I mean, it was all, I think it was also used in the beginning of True Lies, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of skiing. Oh, yeah. Skiing, yeah. skiing yeah, commandos are skiing. fun. Yeah. Yeah, some boobs. Well, after getting to the plant, they'd break in, plant explosives on the heavy water power cells, and hopefully cripple German heavy water production. Oh, dude, that's cool. Metal is also reminding me of Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. I'll tell you no, what, no, though. Th this is... I don't think they got to yeah. worry about heavy water being created because they had Sergeant Kissel somewhere there. And as long as he kept his latrine filled, he was <laughs> making that heavy, heavy water. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. <laughs> so... On the night of February 27th, in the dead of the Norwegian winter, the team skied to the location, staffed their skis, and an igloo they made themselves, hmm. and scaled a 600-foot-tall sheer cliff at the back of the plant to avoid guard posts. Because the Nazis are like, wow. nobody's fucking crazy enough to scale up that there's no, they didn't even, it didn't even cross their mind that someone could do this. Wow. Which, and again, what fueled them was truly pure ignorance then met with, like, oh, we can do this. Like, they did not truly understand that it was in the bottom of a crag. Like, this thing was literally, like, perfectly safe from any sort of overhead bombing. And so they, that whole breakdown in the Bastard Brigade of them, like, 
trying to figure out like, okay, can you even climb this fucking wall that surrounds this thing? And the one was being like, if there are plants growing, then there are places for our hands to go. And so then they went and then that's where they figured out. <laughs> so they would just look for the plants. That's, it's crazy. And the blinding snow. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. After following Nazi patrol routes to hide their tracks, the Norwegians found an unguarded gate and cut the lock, whereafter five men provided cover while the demolition team cut a hole in the fence to gain access to the plant itself. But when they got through the outer perimeter, the team found that contrary to their advance insider intelligence, yeah. every door and window had been bolted shut. Improvising, they found a utility duct and crawled their way to the room where the heavy water was both stored and produced. It's crazy, man. They're doing like Persona 5 Royal shit. When you know when you have to yeah. like do it, it's all with the Metal Gear Solid too. We have to find a lot of yeah. vents. Yeah, a lot of vent use. Also with the Arkham Asylum, uh, with the Batman game, which is actually why I don't really love the Batman game. The Batman game is 90% vents. A lot of vents. Yeah. 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 Well, after dropping 15 feet from the ceiling to the floor... The commandos snuck up on the only guard. Improbably, the Nazis had left a frumpy old Norwegian man named Gustav <laughs> to guard what was supposed to be the Nazis' most treasured scientific resource. Are you looking uh, for the fat boy water? It is in the <laughs> room. <laughs> you Thank, you, Thank you, Gustav. Thank you, Gustav. <laughs> he just definitely seems like the Milton from Office Space, where it's like, okay, Gustav, we're going to go party. You stay here and have the guard of the water. <laughs> he did not water, give but... a fucking shit. Because no. then, because he's, I'm basically a prisoner here too. You know, I'm yeah. being forced to watch this thing by Nazis. So he's like, yeah, just do it. Just also, get it you're, done. You're watching water. Yeah. It's real boring. Yeah, of course. And so Gustav was held captive in a corner while the demolition team placed enough explosives to blow up all 18 fuel cells and 770 pounds of heavy water. The worst was when they started tickling me. <laughs> they were tickling me in the corner. I couldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I knew, it got bigger and bigger. And it oh, was me I? and five skiers. And all it takes is one pole to make a little bit of a side war party. <laughs> well, Gustav, the entire time, he's like, uh, please be careful around there. That if you are not careful around there, you're going to hurt the heavy. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Like, he didn't, it took him a while to figure out that they had showed up to destroy the plant. Right. And so, after planting all the explosives, they took Gustav with them. And at 1.13 a.m., two hours after they climbed that sheer cliff, they lit the fuse and the cells went Boom! Whoa. Mission accomplished! Sweet. But they also knew that the Nazis were going to come and round up everybody within like a hundred miles of the plant. So what they were doing was, as they went, they ripped off a patch. They had Brit they were all dressed like British soldiers, so they ripped off the British stuff. It's like, it's cool, because again, it feels like, a, like so an action movie. And like, threw like the, sig the British insignias down, and then they would talk in Norwegian about how beautiful London was around all of the people that they were gra gradually kidnapping throughout the yeah. the heist part of it. It's great because they wow, had, that's They ended up with two uh, hostages by the uh, Gustav and another Nazi and an actual Nazi that oh, they came okay. across along the way. Interesting. Why do I feel like Gustav would be played by Josh Gad? <laughs> Damn you, Josh Gad! It should have been me! It should have been me! Now, this team thereafter went down in Norwegian and World War II history as some of the bravest and most important heroes of the war because they'd seemingly crippled the Nazi nuclear program. Wow. That, however, is not really the truth. You just got debunked. <laughs> no, don't let the truth get in the way of a good war story. While the mission was indeed impressive in its planning and execution, Operation Gunnerside didn't really matter because Heisenberg's program had stalled. Even worse, hmm. while Norsk Hydro was supposed to be out of commission for at least a year, up to two years, it was back up and running bigger and better than ever within six weeks. Wow. Yeah. They and barely you, put a dent in it. By the time they had, the, in the book, The Bastard Brigade, by the time they had the big congratulatory dinner, because then they took all the guys that did it out to dinner in London, by yeah. the time they had got to the dinner, the plant was already doing its thing again. 
So they were no, like, but it was still but, good. But he didn't want to tell it, them. So they're all like, they were literally all new. They they scheduled the big celebration knowing that wow. it didn't even matter. But it was nice because then they all got to get out of the war. 